It's More Than Sunday with Daniel and Julia. You ready to talk about the word? I am. Hey, let's get into it. Uh, let me ask you a question. Have you ever felt like you're on the outside looking in? I have. When? Was this, when? Mm-hmm. Like one time or all the times? Oh, man. Just one time. Just one? <laughs> uh, yeah. I think uh, it started in junior high, high school, for sure. What did it feel like? Like I was on the outside looking in. <laughs> See, that's what I asked, and there she goes, giving me a good, solid answer. Uh, there was a time that I made someone feel like they're on the outside looking in. What'd you do? When I was about four years old, I locked the babysitter outside. <laughs> Did you really? You were yeah. four? Yeah, I went around and locked her out when she was in the front, and then I ran and locked her out in the back. That's awful. Yeah. And then she was on the outside looking in. <laughs> Oh, your parents. I bet they were so mad. They were so blessed. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, <laughs> okay. this is kind of where we find ourselves in the story. So the whole book of Ephesians is like this general letter that Paul writes to the church, and he's not really addressing any problems. He's just kind of laying out like high church theology, not yeah. pri not order, but, but the theology to help the Gentile believers understand mm -hmm. who they are. Now, the Gentiles... Totally were on the outside. Like they weren't just, well, maybe I'm kind of around Christianity or around the things of God. Total pagans. So hold on. Clarify Gentiles. What does that mean? Gentiles is everybody other than the Jewish people. Okay. So in the Bible, there, there's no like emphasis on race and, you know, even the ethnicity. It'll identify different ethnic groups. Um, but there's no real division based on that in mm -hmm. God's eyes. And even in the Bible, they don't make a deal of it. It's religion. Mm -hmm. It really is those who are in covenant, who are the Jewish people, mm -hmm. whom God said, I'm choosing you to be my people and I'll be your God. And all the other nations had other gods. Gotcha. Okay. So that's whom the Gentiles are. They're, they're, they are the nations. The nations of the world other than Israel. So is the book of Ephesians written to those people? Yes. The Gentiles? Yes. Anybody other than... Anybody outside the Jewish covenant? Right. Okay. Yeah. Outside the Jewish people. Jewish people. Okay. Yep. And so he spends the first chapter and he's just telling them who they are. He starts off and says, you're saints. Mm. So imagine this. Like, this is a group of people who, total pagans before, but they came to faith in Christ. You're saints. You're, you're blessed with every spiritual blessing. You're chosen. You're loved. You're accepted. You're adopted. You are redeemed by his blood. You have an inheritance. So like that would all be of this. in comparison to those who grew up in a Jewish environment who understood that that blessing was there. Yeah, they were the chosen people. Oh, okay. They knew they were chosen by God. So that was part of what they learned growing up, like from one generation to the next generation to the next. Right, right. Every, every single one of them, this is what they knew. They thought they believed. And, um, and then the Gentiles, they get brought into this faith. Gotcha. And it was, it was shocking to them, for one, because, you know, they still felt like outsiders. And, and the other side is they were still treated like outsiders. Yeah. Because the Jewish people had such a hard time understanding that this promised Messiah and this salvation is for more than the Jews. Mm -hmm. So the Jewish people were set apart by God to God. But they weren't, they weren't supposed to be isolated from, from the world in the sense of um, withdrawing. But they're really supposed to be a light to the world. Yes, right. So God calls them king a kingdom of, of priests. So what's a priest do? A priest you know, represents the people before the Lord. And they were to be a prophetic voice in the world, bringing the voice of God to the nations. But they didn't do that part very well. No. So, so Jesus, they became separate. Yeah, totally separate. So when Ephesians is being written, it's Paul convincing this group of people that now that you have come in to know who Christ is and you've received him as your savior and he's transformed your heart, your life. I mean, they've had an encounter with God. Yes. He's now explaining to them that this is now your inheritance. This is who you are now. This is what you've been brought into. Is that right, correct? Right, right. Because... You can imagine if if um, you were on the outside looking in for the whole time and then suddenly you're in this new life, this new experience. You don't know everything that belongs to you. And the people who were there before you, they didn't think it belonged to you either. So the right. Jew, the Jews were shocked because because Jesus is the to them, the Jewish Messiah. He's the one who the Jewish scripture had pointed to that he's coming for those who embraced him. 
for the first eight years or so of the church, thousands and thousands of converts, they were all Jews. Ah, uh, okay. And so then finally, when you get to Acts chapter 8, when the Holy Spirit is poured out upon the Gentiles in, in uh, Cornelius' yeah. house, mm -hmm. they're shocked. Right. Because they realize, oh, Gentiles got filled with the Spirit just like us. So their sign for uh, that shift was the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so the Holy Spirit was the one that yes. made that identifying yes. mark. So yes. God came to the Gentiles and they saw what happened with the Gentiles. It was the same thing that was happening with the Jews. Right. And that's when they said, I think in the scripture it says, how can we deny what God is doing? Right, right. Yeah, they had a big argument about it. Right. Because a lot of uh, Jewish leaders were coming down, Jewish Christian leaders were coming down and saying, no, you have to follow the law. Because Gentiles had been able to convert to Judaism for centuries. Right. And many joined themselves even in Egypt's time and, and followed along from there. But they all had to follow the law. And it was all something they could do. And it was an outward proof of, oh, you met the standards. Right. But suddenly, they're, they're just there. And the Holy Spirit does it. Wow. And, uh -huh. and, and it messes with the... the it messes with the, the system, the structure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, Religious system. So now... Then Jews are wrestling through, well, do they have to still be like Jews to mm -hmm. to be saved and, and be filled? Right. And, and the reality is no, because the Holy Spirit filled them. They were prophesying and speaking in tongues in mm -hmm. the same way the Jewish people. So it's clearly a work that the Holy Spirit did. And now that just opened the floodgates for the Gentiles to come into the so kingdom. So truly in that setting, you know, we say this sometimes, we want God to do what he wants to do. So in that setting, he got to do what he wanted right, right, to do right, right. Yeah. In, in like real time right there with the Gentiles. He came and he said, no, this is for all people. So he broke that open. Right. And so, so, so when you think about a Jewish believer who is receiving the promises of God, especially in the New Testament, New mm -hmm. Covenant promises, apostles are preaching this is adding to and building up on what they already believed about themselves right. and what they already knew. Right. But not the Gentiles. Okay. So the Jews already knew they were chosen, accepted, beloved, redeemed. They had an inheritance. They were special. Mm. They were wanted. They were blessed. They have already known all of that. And so this was an affirmation to the Jews. Right. But this is a whole new world for the Gentiles. Wow. That's so that's where we find ourselves in, in, in chapter 2. In chapter 2. Yeah. And uh, I, I just want to actually look at... The second part, we'll look at the very first verse first. But he says this that in in chapter two, go ahead and read verse one. And he made you and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Okay, so all through this chapter you're gonna see you used to be this way, but now you're this way. Right. So the very first chapter he just identifies, he doesn't even say who you used to be. He just says who you are now. Mm. And then in chapter two he starts to say, You used to be this way, but now you're this way. You were dead. But now you're alive. You followed the spirit of the world, but now you don't. So, you know, God showed you mercy and love. He He made us alive together. He seated us together with Christ in the heavenly places. So now you have a place of authority. Wow. And not just your own authority as Gentiles, but the highest authority. Right. This is where Gentile believers are brought to the highest place of authority. Oh, wow. What a shift. for Above all powers and principalities. Wow. Yeah. So he says that. And then he goes on, you know, God, he says, God is doing this so he can show the exceeding riches of his of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Uh, and then he says, by grace, you've been saved through faith. through faith. So he just acknowledges that like, hey, you didn't do this on your own. Mm -hmm. It's not of works. You can't boast about it. No one can. And then he says, you're his masterpiece. Verse 10 says, we are his workmanship. Wow. Created in Christ Jesus for good works that we should walk in. Okay. So all of that kind of lays the groundwork to what I want to focus on here. Mm -hmm. And that's in chapter 11. So, I mean, chapter 2, verse 11. Okay. He says, Therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision, made in the flesh by hands. After all these things, he says, he says, remember who you are. Mm -hmm. remember, or remember who you were. Mm -hmm. You were once. Right. Go back to who, where you came from. Like, think about that for a moment. You were called the uncircumcision he didn't just say you were uncircumcised because they're still uncircumcised right he says but you were called happen. the uncircumcision mm -hmm. what did david call goliath you uncircumcised philistine you uncircumcised philistine yeah. so so 
this is a pejorative term. It's it is a put down. Mm. But the reason why it's a put down, you're the uncircumcised, you're the uncircumcised, is because what he's really saying is you don't have a covenant with God. Mm. You don't have a covenant with God. So in this scripture, he's saying you were called uncircumcised mm -hmm. because you were you didn't have a covenant with God. So there yeah. there was a derogatory term associated with you based on who you were as right, Gentiles. Right, right. So he's identifying that's who you were. Mm -hmm. And so and so it's a status almost like almost even a social status. Oh yeah, you say, yeah. You're being othered. You're being othered, right? Okay. Okay, because because we're circumcised and we're we're in. And we have a relationship with God. Circumcision is the sign of a covenant. We'll talk about that. But you're not circumcised. Gotcha. And so you're you're and not outside. only that they knew that. Yeah. That's and, what and, they were called. Yes. And okay. that's and yes. That so and it says that here who are called uncircumcision. Right. And by the by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. So uh, what's interesting here is. What what do we what do we call the gospel? The gospel is another word for what? It's good news. Good news. So you're preaching good news to somebody. If you already think life is good mm -hmm. and you hear good news, you think, oh, that's great. That's just even better news. Right. But right here, he actually lays out the bad news. Right, he does. Yes, in those next couple scriptures. Too. Right. Right. So in order to appreciate the good news, you have to understand the bad news, what that really means. Okay, mm -hmm. so read read verse twelve. Just verse 12. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Okay, pause right there. So that's the bad news. He lays out five things that describe the Gentiles. Hmm. Five things of their condition. He said, I want you to know without how bad Christ. of condition you, you were. First of all, hmm. you were without Christ. That's real bad. You had no Messiah. Second of all, you were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. So you had no status within Israel. You had no rights within Israel. You had no rights to what Israel had right to. Mm. You had no place, no citizenship. Some versions would say citizenship. Okay. You don't have any citizenship. When he's saying with Israel, he's really saying with, with heaven, of the, the kingdom, mm -hmm. God's kingdom. You had no citizenship. Third thing is, and this is a big deal, you were uh, strangers from the covenants of promise. Yeah, I noticed that when I was reading it, that there's an S on the end of that. Yeah, so we think about what, what covenants stand out to you from the Old Testament. Abrahamic. Abrahamic okay. covenant. And um, if you look in Genesis 12, that's when God said to Abraham, he said, get out from your family, get out to the land, to the land that I'm showing you. Right. I'm going to bless you and make you an ex exceedingly great, and I'm going to make your name great. Right. So there's this blessing that's on Abraham. There's this uh, getting out from your family and separating you. But then he says, I will bless those who bless you and I'll curse those who curse you. And in you, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. So God had a plan. Yeah. In covenant. Yes. And when you get into chapter 15 and 17 of Genesis, that's where he rolls out. I'm going to give you land as far as your eye can see mm -hmm. is all going to belong to you forever. Wow. Second all, he says, and I'm going to give you descendants mm -hmm. That'll, that'll outnumber the sands of the sea or the, the stars of the sky. Wow, okay. So th so all of these, th these are promises to Abraham. Now, this is a covenant to Abraham. You get into Mosaic Covenant, you can look at, of course, Exodus 20 with the Ten Commandments, but also, really, you look at things like Deuteronomy, and especially Deuteronomy 28, where there's the blessings of the covenant. If you keep this law, then this will happen. So part right. of the covenant. All these blessings will overtake you and your body, your fields, your family, your your savings mm -hmm. accounts, your flocks. Everything's going to be blessed. You get into the Davidic covenant with David. God said, man, you're always going to have someone to sit on the throne. Yeah. I'm going to raise up a dynasty. A man and, after my own heart. And mm -hmm. so, so, and there's a number of other covenants in the Old Testament, but none of those were made with the Gentiles. No, they were all made with the Jewish people. So... So when you read this or I read this, you might think, oh, God made this covenant with Abraham or David or Moses or, or those Jewish people at that time. But to a Jew, they don't look at that as, oh, that's God's covenant with Abraham. They say, I am of the seed of Abraham. Uh, I am of the line of David. You know, I am of the kingdom of, of Israel. So there is an identity yes. that they grow up with. And I right. think I said that before, but that's a big deal. Yes. Because it's a... If I'm a Gentile coming, which, which I was, right, mm -hmm. and I am, 
coming in, that's a whole different thing right. for for me versus yes. them. They had something that they knew about. Yeah, so so oftentimes like being here, adopted. Here in the United right. States, we'll um maybe you grow up in a Christian home and finally, you know, around 18, 19, 20, sometime as an adult, you embrace your faith. So sometimes earlier, like yeah. you at six, but oftentimes, you know, it happens later on. And it's not like for many people, this isn't everybody, but if you grew up in a Christian home, you're, mm -hmm. you you were aware of these things, and now you're finally receiving it, you yeah. know, accepting it, but you knew about it, and now right. you're going to walk in it. Uh, that would be like these Jewish people who found the Messiah. Like, oh, now this this even is, means so much more. But the Gentiles, they weren't even part of that. Mm -hmm. This was not part of their, their world right here. So gotcha. okay. he's telling them, you were, you were strangers from the covenants of promise. So here's the thing. Everything that those covenants and those blessings and promises included belonged to the Jewish people, ultimately who would follow their Messiah. And then God is saying this here in just a moment, how they've been brought into that. He said, you, ha you had no hope and you were without Christ or without God in the world. They so had the God. things. Yeah. Line them again. Okay. They were without Christ. They were aliens from from the commonwealth of Israel. Mm -hmm. They were strangers from the covenants of God, uh, covenants of promise. They had no hope, and they were without God in this world. That's the bad news. Yeah, that's the bad news. That's pretty bad. It is bad. So no no, no Christ, hope. no God, no hope, <laughs> no no promises, mm. and, and no, no rights. No rights before mm. the Lord. Wow. Okay. So, so you're guilty. You were dead. He already said you're dead. I mean, like, he's trying to paint this picture. You were in bad shape. Right. That's a bad news. Yeah. And then we get to verse 13. Can we read oh, it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, read verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you ones who are far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Okay. So good. So he mm -hmm. says the bad news, and then he throws in the but now. So remember, you were, but now. Right. So, you know, every one of us in our lives, we have a story of, hey, I used to be but God. Yeah. And that's what he's saying, saying here. He used to be like this, but God. Right. God showed up, and here's what's really important. You who were once far off mm -hmm. from, from God, from hope, from, from the Messiah, from the commonwealth, and from the covenants, you've been brought near by the blood of Christ. Mm. Now, remember, he said, you were the uncircumcised. You're called the uncircumcision. What is the circumcision? What is the circumcision a symbol of? Covenant. Yeah, covenant. Covenant, your covenant with God. Mm -hmm. God instituted the, the sign of circumcision to Abraham first in, in Genesis 17. Right. He said, you and your whole household, you guys need to get circumcised because that's a sign of the covenant I made with you. Now, if I was an adult... In Abraham's household, because he didn't have kids, so this isn't what just those who are born from now on. It's like everybody right now mm. has to get circumcised. That was a sad day of it. Can you imagine it? your boss comes in and says, "Hey guys, I heard from God." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'd be arguing real fast. I say, "You better go pray some more." <laughs> I need. We need. You better we go need pray to, some more, buddy. We need confirmation on you sure this. Sure, that was God or the stuff you ate last night. <laughs> I know, but but God said this, so there's a sign up of the covenant. Covenant. The circumcision. Now, I, you could think, can we get tattoos? <laughs> can we like, you Put know, a ring, in our nose, yeah, ring, you know, yeah something. something like that. Yeah. And, and why of all places there where nobody else is going to see it? It's not right. like we have a circumcision check, you know, at the door. Um, I wonder if they did. I don't know. Like in the temple, I always <laughs> wondered, you know, in the gro grocery store, when you go in and the door opens and it blows wind from down below. <laughs> I always thought they had one from the bottom. <laughs> Woo! And you walk in. I don't think circumcise. so. Circumcise. No. <laughs> no, no. Like, yeah, I don't want to be a greeter at that church. No. Oh my gosh, dude, no. All right, so, <laughs> so circumcision, there's the, the removing of the foreskin, and that's on the reproductive organ, right? Right. Obviously. But why there? Right. Well, because God's making a covenant for generation to generation, and there's huh. some... So it, his sign of the covenant wasn't just for that generation. In other words, it's a sign from generation. That's interesting. I've never thought of that. It, and here's the deal. Obviously, mm -hmm. you're not just because your dad was circumcised. Uh, you're not born circumcised. You know, right. it doesn't it doesn't change the DNA or anything. But every time you reproduce, every time you are at your most intimate point with your covenant spouse, your your covenant partner, there, 
you are reminded of this covenant you have with God. But every time you reproduce, this, there's this reminder that God wants covenant children. Wow. He wants this to continue and extend. And so this is, this is just... It's interesting. But it's all outward. So if you look at verses, like look up Deuteronomy 30, verse 6. Deuteronomy 30, verse 6. And I'll talk about circumcision there. And I'm going to look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 11, because it's easier to find. Chapter 6, what did you say? Deuteronomy 30, verse 6. 30. Say amen when you get there. <laughs> okay. Deuteronomy 30, verse 6. Read it out loud. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, that you may live. Wow, what a powerful scripture. So the circumcision that God's really after, in verse 6 of Deuteronomy 30, he's saying, I'm going to circumcise the heart. So it's not just physically on the outside that man can do, but I'm going to do it on the inside. Right. Now, right now christ so that's the goal that's the end yes, result for yeah. him even in deuteronomy he already knows an outward sign is not going to do it mm -hmm. he's got to get to the heart of man yep wow and then when we look at deuteronomy i mean colossians chapter 2 11 it says in him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of flesh by the circumcision of christ Buried with him in baptism, which you also were raised with him through the faith and working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you can read that, uh, read the rest. I mean, it's so good. But you were circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Mm. So the Jews, they were made with the circumcision by hands. Whoa, okay. And now Paul's sitting here saying, but you were circumcised with the one made without hands, which is exactly what he's saying in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. It was his shedding of blood, not yours. Wow. It was his, the sign of the covenant is on the cross. Mm. It's his flesh that was cut, his flesh that was torn, his blood that was poured to circumcise not your flesh, but your heart. Mm. And this is what the scripture is saying. You were this, but in order to turn all of those things around... Christ was crucified for you. His blood was shed. Right. And that's what brings us into covenant with God. So, I'm still back in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. <laughs> that, that took me a hot minute. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a promise. Right. That he promised he will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, that you may live. I think it's interesting that God's goal and desire is that we would live, right? right. From, the, from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So Jesus, even on the cross, what you're saying is when he poured out his blood, his goal, whole goal is that we would have eternal life. Yeah, like yeah. from the beginning, beginning yeah. is that you would live because you're under a sentence of death. Right. And so in Deuteronomy, he says it from the beginning, the Lord will God, God will circumcise your heart. So when we encounter Jesus, when we come in to faith, he is circumcising our heart. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I see sometimes when I see somebody come to Jesus for the first time, when they are Gentiles and they come in and they haven't been raised in church per yeah. se. Or they have, they're not familiar, but God begins to move in their heart. I've sat across the table many times with people who this is their first experience with God. And it is amazing to watch God circumcise their heart in that moment. Yeah, and that's yeah. what he's doing yep. himself mm -hmm. so that they may live and that mm -hmm. they would love the Lord their God and their descendants. Their whole, everything changes for them yeah. in that moment. Yep. And that, that's amazing. And he was saying that back in Deuteronomy. Yeah, that's what I know. That, I've never seen that. I is, have another That line, is as but... Old Testament law as you can get, Deuteronomy. Right. No, that's true. And so even then, you know, this is where it's really important to know that the law has passed away. But the blessings and the promises of the covenants, even that fall within the law, have not passed away. Right. So the commandments against you have passed away, but the blessings, they have not passed away. Right. Well, what a powerful, 
What a powerful message through Ephesians. Yeah. I, I love that we're going through this book because I'm learning things I, I didn't see before. It's good stuff. It's so good. And and so because of this, you you have access. You you have a God. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. You have citizenship in heaven. The Bible tells us that New Testament says we are mm-hmm. ne- we are citizens of heaven now. All of us Gentiles are too. A citizen has rights. Hmm. You have protection. You have right. legal rights as a citizen of heaven. And you you have you serve the name that's above every name. And you're mm-hmm. seated with him in heavenly places. Yep. You have covenant promises now. All of those promises, like read what it says and know that that's not just for the Jews and it's not just for Old Testament. It's for all of God's people. Because mm-hmm. when you keep reading, he says yeah, he, I know. I'm reading he, just he 14, made the 15, two, 16, the two groups of people one man. Yeah. So there's no longer Jew nor Gentile. He, he's made one before him. So he's, he's brought them together, merged them together. You, you might still have your ethnic identity, but that's secondary. Right. Uh, and to being that, in Christ. Yeah. And that's, that's not a limiting factor uh, unless you put it over like, oh, well, because I'm this or this, I can't do that. But really in Christ, you have all of this stuff. Wow. So I love verse 14. I know we're not supposed to skip ahead too much, but it says, For he himself is our peace, right. who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Mm-hmm. And then he talks about the cross and Jesus, what his flesh on the cross did for yeah. us. I can't wait to get into that with you yep. as well as we work, work through this book. Um, context is a big deal when it comes to even reading Ephesians mm-hmm. and that who it was written to. I right. mean, that's me. That's our family. Right. Yeah, you know, right. my parents came to know Jesus in the in the seventies, mm-hmm. and neither one of them grew up in Christian homes like this. Mm-hmm. You know, there might be in a form of understanding to some degree, um, but God circumcised their heart as teenagers, right. yeah, and their children. That scripture came to pass for their, and the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants. And that has happened. And I've watched it in generation and our children, you know, to love the Lord their God with all their heart, with all their soul, with all that they might, with all your mind, that they may live. I just, I want to take that scripture this week and meditate into that. Well, let's do this. If you're watching and, and you realize, oh, I am, I'm without hope. Mm. I'm without God. I know a little bit about him, but I'm not serving him with my whole heart. Maybe you recognize as the Bible calls you and has called all of us dead in our sins and you want that situation to change. This is what I want you to do right now. Mm. I want you to go ahead and close your eyes and just pray and ask the Lord. Say, say, God, I'm asking that you would forgive me of my sin, that you would wash me clean, that you would be my Lord and Savior. I place my trust in you, Lord God. And I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit so I can walk a victorious life in you. In your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a home church, I want to encourage you, if you're near the Folsom area, come out and visit us. If you got a home church, get plugged in. See what God can do. And and it's so important. Just let God speak to you through his word. Not just on Sundays, but more than Sunday. Live it out. We love you. God bless you. And have a great day.